Hello! In today's video, I will be showing you the X10 interface that I created. It works with the firecracker in order to turn off these lamp and appliance modules to turn on and off lights and other appliances such as a fan. Let's get started. Now you may have noticed I've been working on a lot of smart house devices and I actually had set up a smart house about 20 years ago before it was really a thing and the way I did it was with these X10 modules. Now they work by talking to each other through the house wiring. I also had a number of light switches and I had various things such as this little clock that allows you to actually not only turn on and off the devices remotely but to set them on a timer. So it had its limitations and I call that Smart House version 1.0. Now, I'm currently working on Smart House version 2.0. Version 2.0 uses an MQTT server in order to talk to a lot of the devices. So my interface actually allows the MQTT server to talk to it, and it relays the message to the X10 modules. It works by connecting to the firecracker here, and the firecracker wirelessly sends a signal to this. This is a piece of my original smart home that I never actually got around to implementing. It was supposed to work by connecting to the serial port of a computer and allows you to use the computer to control all of the devices. And since I hadn't gotten rid of these modules, because I was eventually planning on creating another smart house, I decided to see if there was a way to interface with the firecracker module. Now I'm going to go ahead and give you a little demonstration of this actually working. I'm going to go ahead and connect this. Now I connect the firecracker. It actually doesn't need to be disconnected when I started, I just forgot to hook it up. I'm going to turn the fan on using open hab here. And you can see it says it's sending an on signal to device 1 on house C. And if I turn it off, it'll actually send the off signal and the fan shuts off. It doesn't work perfect and I will probably be replacing it with some of the newer devices. But this allowed me to save a lot of money and keep a lot of functionality. You may have noticed that the screen kind of turns off after about five seconds and that's because in my program I added a little timeout so that it's not always displaying something on the screen and that's because when I'm trying to sleep at night if I had it on then the light was kind of annoying. So I also have this floor lamp hooked up and I can turn that on and off as well. I probably have about four devices hooked up currently on these plug-in power systems, but they actually work pretty well. If I wanted to, I can also use this clock to send on and off signals as well as dim them. Now I started implementing dimming in my program, but I, frankly I don't really use it all that often, so I'm happy with how it's working. So this is powered by the Adafruit Feather Huzzah which basically runs on an ESP8266. I'm going to go ahead and unplug this. Now this is a pretty simple module. It uses just a serial port here. It attaches to two, like a serial data and a clock, as well as a ground pin. And then I'm also using a, a little LCD module, one of those 0.96 inch modules. And I do that so I can display like what device it's currently talking to. Give you a little close up there. I also have it being powered by the USB port that's right on the Adafruit Huzzah. And I'm just using this little USB adapter. It's actually a pretty low powered device. It's only 0.7 amps, which 
is right around the threshold I normally get rid of these because they're not very good for charging things. Now the reason I'm using the Adafruit Feather Huzzah is I originally had started off with a Node MCU but it actually failed on me and the seller was nice enough to send me another one but I wanted it to be very reliable and I have a lot of good luck with the quality of the Adafruit products. Speaking of which, on my drawing board that I created last week, I had my Itsy Bitsy M4 die on me. Now I have brought it back to life using a J-Link programmer and I was able to do that using instructions that were pointed to me by Lemore of Adafruit, more commonly known as Lady Ada. Adafruit is such a good company that even the founder is helping me with a product such as this. And so the bootloader on here had actually been erased. What happened was I had connected the four Neo Trellis boards to the three volt pin on here, which underpowered the processor on here, causing the right protection on it to fail and it erased the bootloader. In the future, if I was gonna hook it up, I would definitely hook it up to the voltage input. I put a comment on my other video, you can watch it up in the corner if you're interested, about how I went ahead and I had gone about fixing it. So that speaks to the quality of the Adafruit products and I would definitely encourage you to buy from them because the fact that I could have a board fail and it comes back to life really speaks volumes on the quality of the item. Thanks for watching. If you're a current subscriber, welcome back. If you're new here, then go ahead and click on that subscribe button and hit the notifications so that you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching. And if you liked it, go ahead and click on the like button and share it with some of your friends if you found this interesting. If you have any suggestions as to features to add to the program for here, go ahead and leave that in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.